Hi, my name is Megan. Welcome to ParentTube. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to best prepare your child for their cochlear implant using language. Um, so FDA guidelines say that about 12 months or older um, is a good time to implant. However, many people end up getting their children implanted before this time. Um, despite this, um, the sooner the better, but this, despite the fact that people are getting their children implanted before this 12 month guideline, there's still a lot of wait time in between. Um, even if children are implanted earlier. Um, this wait time includes identification of hearing loss, then more testing, and then finally implementa um, implementation of the cochlear implant. Um, so in between this time when your child's identified and when your child's um, given the cochlear implant, you want to make sure that they're getting the most exposure to language that they can, um, even if they can't um, hear some of it or a lot of it. Um, that's fine. Amy McConkie Robbins talks about three phases um, before implementation that should be um, followed. So the first phase um, is identification and even if it, even after your child is identified you want to continue singing to them, talking with them, rhyming with them. Um, this exposure is really important and you want to continue this exposure. Your child's been hearing these songs, um, talking with you um, and hearing like nursery rhymes and stuff and you want to make sure that you continue to do that. Um, you want to make sure that you continue to give them language um, and especially repeated language, familiar songs, games, um, stuff like that is really important um, because then they hear the sounds and they recognize them um, and that's what you want. So um, the second and third phase are um, between um, either when your child receives a hearing aid um, and then finally a cochlear implant or when your child's given a cochlear implant. Um, so things like verbal cues such as, oh, listen, do you hear that sound over there and point to the sound. Um, you want to make sure that they're always recognizing other sounds around them, environmental, speaking, um, things like he uh, the heating vents or um, the microwave, when the microwave sounds go off. You want to make sure that they're aware of those sounds and that they hear them and that they recognize that the sounds are happening. Um, this is just training them to kind of listen for things around them, um, recognizing um, sounds around them. So that's really important. Also, um, always be monitoring any changes that happen in your child's just vocalization, um, if they learn new words or if they're um, repeating things, repeating things, babbling, um, or behavior. Um, if your child becomes frustrated or if your child's um, maybe change, mood has changed for the better. Um, all these things are things that you want to tell professionals so that they're more aware of the situation going on at home. They're not there with you. You're the front line. So you want to make sure that you're always communicating things, even if it seems like a small thing. It's important. So make sure you're always sharing um, and working with your team. So also imitating your child's vocalizations. This auditory feedback loop is extremely important. Um, your child wants to know that you hear them and they want to know that you want to respond and that you're interested. Um, and that will help them definitely learn language better because um, they, there's a purpose to learning language and your child needs to know that. They need to be aware that um, they'll, their, their speaking is not in vain and their, their babbling is not in vain. Um, you want to recognize that and give merit to that. Um, and any language that they use is good language. So um, make sure you're either responding or repeating the language. Um, it's really important. So also um, encourage participation. So using familiar rhymes, songs, or games, um, you can always encourage participation, um, especially um, after your child gets, um, gets their implant um, or their aided device. Um, it, repeating songs that they've always heard um, maybe it's, it's even more exciting for them to sing it with you or um, even say the ending of the song. Um, so yeah, stuff like that is really important. Um, and always encourage participation, always encourage speaking, always encourage listening. Um, and your child will see that and they'll be excited about it um, and they'll want to speak with you. So again, um, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you got something out of this. Um, if not, there are sources below that you can look at. Some of the sources talk about what to do um, for, um, medically um, for your child's implementation of the cochlear implant. Um, so um, like procedures, like what to look for, what to, um, what to expect, um, what to do after maybe. Um, so take a look at those below. Um, and then the source that I found a lot of my information on um, for uh, what, how to speak with your child, um, how to help them learn language, um, either be like before the implant or prepare them. Um, so just take a look at those sources. Um, hopefully they help you like they helped me. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good one.